Hello, and welcome to the video for what is a random stream. So let's go ahead and take a look at what a random stream is and how we might use it. The easiest way of thinking about it is this. A random stream is a variable that holds a list of random stuff, random information that you can use to get other random stuff from. And the list it holds is actually set based on a seed. So think of it maybe as 100 different pieces of paper, each of them having different information on it, different random numbers. But each piece of paper can be called whenever you want it. So I want this set of random numbers on page 5. And every time I ask for page 5, I get the exact same set of random numbers. So it's useful for reseeding or remaking something the same way. Now we have a bunch of different nodes. These are our basics that we can see here. We have our random stream variable itself. It's of type random stream. And these are going to be your inputs. And it's important to note that this variable here that you create, that you use, that you set, or you seed, or you do whatever you with, it stores the current state of that stream for whenever you ask for another variable from its list. You can break or make them using the make or break nodes. You can set random seeds, seed random streams, or reset random streams. And all of these nodes are covered in their own individual videos. We're just going to cover the random stream itself and basically how it works. So I have a random stream variable, and it has by default a default value. Now, this default value really doesn't work. It's always going to default to zero no matter what you do. Like you can see here, I have 200. Let's go ahead and plug this in to my set random stream node. Actually, no, we don't even need to do that. Let's not even set it. Let's just skip right past it. We're not going to set. We're not going to seed. We're going to do nothing. We're just going to take the random stream we have set to 200 here. We're going to feed that into a random integer from stream node with a max of 10. And we're going to print this out. And we're going to see what happens. And we get 11 values, starting with 1, 7, 5, 5. We run this again. Keep in mind, this is random. 1755, run it again, 1755. That is where your random stream comes in useful. We're asking for a random integer with a max of 10 from this stream. Because we have a stream set up, we have it seeded with an initial value, it's going to give us back the same result in the same order every time we ask for it, 1755. Now, this is something I mentioned earlier. We show 200 here. Let's change this to 0. We're going to go and save and compile so we make sure it's changed and hit play. 1755. The initial seed does not matter for your random stream. You actually have to use one of the other nodes to set it or choose a random. I can show you that quickly here. We'll go ahead and plug in our variable. We'll go ahead and hook this up. You'll also notice the input here is a diamond. That means it's a reference. That means we're actually going to talk to the original value in here and set it when we need to. New seed of zero. Run this. Hopefully you know 1755 is going to come out because our seed by default was 0. However, let's change our seed to 1. We'll hit play. Now we have a whole new set, 95833. Run it again, 95833. That's the power of the random streams. Every single time you ask it for a value based on whatever the current seed is, it's going to return back something from its list in the order based on how many times you've asked it before that. So if you've asked it five times, you're going to get back the sixth value, and it's going to be the same the sixth time every time. A common example of this is something like Minecraft, where you create a seed for the world, and it uses that to randomize. And based on that seed, as long as you recreate it with that same seed, you're going to get the same results when it makes the random world. So that's where this is useful. Keep in mind, though, even though this is the same, we saw in here, 95833, how you use it will actually determine what you're going to get back. So if I change this from max of 10 to max of 9, now we had 9533 before, so we should be fine. When we run it, we're going to get back different values. I'm putting in different values here, so I'm going to get back different values here. Keep that in mind. Not only does your stream variable have to be the same, the way you use the stream variable, what you're asking it for, has to be the same, or you're going to get back different results. And that's it. That is the basics of our random stream. It's a variable. 
Everything that accesses it uses it as the original reference and modifies the original variable, so keep that in mind. You need to feed it the same random stream variable you have seeded or created every time you talk to it to get back the same random results. If you're copying this variable to somewhere else, or you're creating a new variable temporarily, or you're not passing it back, for example, into another blueprint by reference, if it cannot get back to the original one, it will not be modifying the original one, and you will not get back the same results. That is one common thing I see happening. So keep that in mind. Maybe you're passing, like, let's say, um, uh, what is it, custom event? Custom event. And this is important. That's why I'm trying to bring this up. And we want new input. You notice you have the pass by reference. You want to make sure you're passing by reference when you're passing something in. And it's going back out. So that way you are passing in basically the original item or a pointer to the original item itself, not just a copy. And that's it. Those are our random stream variable. Refer to the other videos for more information on how to set them or seed them or reset them and any quirks with that.